Hey, everybody, and welcome to the sixth episode of Everybody's Always Right. I hope everybody's, everybody's doing well. This is Styles, your host. And uh, today we do not have a special guest because I've done this in my French uh, version uh, before, but once in a while I'm going to do one of these shows where uh, I just go through um, local events, uh, not local events, but, uh, you know, latest news and stuff like that. Um. So I hope everybody's doing well. We're Thursday, and we are the 1st of October 2020 for those who are logging on like much later. Who knows? This is a podcast after all, so maybe people may be listening and listen to it. Holy crap. I'm, I'm really, really <laughs> not finding my words tonight. Holy crap instead of cow. So let me take a breath here and start over. As I was saying, we are now live on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, but this is a podcast, so it will be found on all major platforms uh, the day after this live. So um, I'm really happy you guys are here. I, I hope you had a good week. As I was saying, it's been a special week. I mean, I mean, this entire year is special. It's hard to believe that we're almost nearing the end of 2020. And in March, which is the beginning of 2020, pretty much, uh, you know, the shit was hitting the fan and probably a little bit before that. And here we are. Wow. And October's coming along. And then Halloween is going to be like in 30 days. And at this rate, we're not going to see any Halloween. Um, a lot of separation and divorces during the, the, the COVID period, including mine. I mean, we're getting separated. I'm selling the house and then, you know, filing for divorce. So it's going to be a tough one. Um, anyone seeing this, uh, share it, by the way. Please share it so that it's, you know, viewed by as many people as possible. And today, so I'm going to talk about a lot of things today. I want to talk about the COVID-19 situation. Uh, the second wave, actually. Uh, I want to give you my opinion about that. The second, the second thing I want to talk about is the elections. I mean, we got to talk about the U.S. elections. It's, I don't know, worth mentioning, I guess, would be a good way of putting it. Yeah, that's what I'd say, worth mentioning. Uh, so that's two things I'd like to talk about. And uh, we're going to get into a lot of different subjects, which I hope will you will find interesting. And uh, yeah, so there are a few things I want to, before we start going through this, there are a few things I want to talk to you about because we will be changing the format of Everybody's Always Right. Uh, we're going to be changing it as of now, I guess. Um, first of all, as you know, usually on every Thursday, everybody, Everybody's Always Right is, is on live and we have a special guest and it's a roughly one hour to two hour show. But uh, we're going to keep that. We're going to keep our interviews, uh, but we're going to add something. As of next week, three days a week, we'll, I'll make a, like a half-hour broadcast. So where I'm going to talk about like what current events, local news, bro uh, branding, marketing news, mostly branding and marketing and business news, and whatever current events are, are typically what we want to talk about. And then I'm going to do my, my long-form interview. Because what I've noticed is that there's not enough traction when you do it one episode a week. Uh, and plus, I have two-hour episodes. Not everybody has the time to listen to all two hours, and that's fine. By the way, if you want to listen to the podcast, this is the way I like to listen to podcasts. I mean, I listen to Joe Rogan podcast and a lot of very long-format podcasts. But I don't listen to them all in one shot. What I do is I'll be in the car. I'll put the podcast on, the episode on, and then I'll just drive. Let's say I'm in traffic for an hour. Then when I'm on my way back home, I'll start listening to the second one. I think that is, not the second one, but the second half. I think that's one of the better ways, I guess, of uh, consuming podcasts, long format podcasts, because I know we don't have time watching our TV and watching our, our screen, watching our computer and our phone to watch a two-hour podcast, but we can listen to it. And that's the advantage of everybody's always right, being on iTunes, being on uh, all the big, you know, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, uh, like I said, iTunes. Um, we're on Amazon Audible. So we're everywhere. 
so it's not going to be that hard to find us and you'll be able to listen to our podcast from wherever you want and at the rhythm you want and that's what's going to be interesting about this now um i'm going to add those small formats i may do them live or i may not but i will be publishing them three days a week so one day a week we're going to have our main podcast so like next thursday we'll probably have an interview sometimes we'll skip interviews but we'll talk like like we are now we'll talk about main subjects and things that are interesting to me and because sometimes it's nice to have an interview but sometimes i just you know there's so much stuff to talk about that i need to address those things so those little segments during the week are going to help me do that and sometimes i'll take a full episode and talk about like too many things that are the, that are worth talking about what am I referring to? I mean, look at the debate this week between Trump and Biden. I think that is worth definitely worth a mention. Uh, what's going on in Quebec with the the, the second wave of COVID nineteen? Uh, cinemas are closing, and there's so many, you know, all the red. Well, yeah, let's say the red districts. You know what what are considered red? I mean, it means that there's a lot more cont- contamination. So, like Montreal, Quebec, and other Saint Jerome, I think Saint Eustache, and other places. So, whoever's in those sections. Um, a lot of businesses have to close and people are asked to stay at home for 14 to 28 days. So we're like back to the old strategy. So that's really worth mentioning. Uh, and I want to, I want to talk about those misses, those businesses and how they're going to survive or if they're going to survive, because I feel there's a slightly in like the slight injustice. So these long term, these long form, um, podcasts will be will help me talk about those things in a you know deeper level so today we're going to talk about all those things uh, as a, as i was saying there's a lot of subjects i want to go through so one we're going to start right away with the covid 19 the second wave of covid 19 and now i think something is wrong and we have to change the strategy behind that there, there's there's something wrong with the way we are dealing with the COVID-19 situation. Um, I think, now I've been saying this for a long time. Um, I think the governments across the world did the right thing at on the first wave. I think governments on the first wave decided to, you know, close down borders and, and restrict use, obligate certain things. At the beginning, we didn't have any, enough masks on the market, so they were afraid, so they said, you know, just stay away from people and and avoid masks. And now they're saying, well, wear a mask whenever you can because it's an added feature, and especially when you cannot, you know, you cannot respect the two meter rule, which, by the way, is normally a one meter rule, but they extended it to a two meter rule uh, for a simple reason that people people don't understand the distance concept in general. So. You know, I was two meters away last time from a lady and she kept yelling at me, two meters, two meters, but I was exactly two meters away. So I think saying two meters is a safe way to make sure that they're at a one meter uh, distance. So governments did do the right thing at the very beginning. Uh, that's Anyway, that's my opinion, right? They didn't know it was coming. They didn't know the symptoms. They didn't know the stats. They didn't know what they were getting into. So they didn't take any risks. And I've, as I've I've mentioned many times, while commenting what other people are saying um the spanish uh, sorry the spanish flu you know made 50 million deaths across the world because governments did not get involved and said you know what let's not cause a panic let's see what happens and that's what happened 50 million people died and i think governments did not want to go through that this time but this is where we're at now so for the first month and a half, businesses started like adapting themselves to the situation of the COVID-19 and the pandemic. And I, I really, I have a lot of respect for those, those like, businesses. But governments haven't changed their strategy. So that's where my problem lies. And that's why I want to talk about the COVID-19. It's not that I believe or I don't believe in the COVID-19. I don't think that's a factor. What's a factor is whether or not governments want to protect their people, and no one can deny that that's a good thing. But you need to adapt your strategy. It, it cannot be the exact same strategy, and that's what we're doing now, right? So in Quebec, uh, Aruda and, and Mr. Legault are enforcing the same rules or roughly the same rules as they did six months ago when we knew nothing about the virus or its percentages or what's going on. 
there it seems a bit strange to me or at least okay maybe not strange but they haven't thought it through and they haven't taken the data and they haven't found a way or a better way to manage the situation and that is very disappointing to me because there are ways to do that um now i've said from the very very beginning that what we need to do is diagnose the type of people that get it and the type of people that can suffer from it because people that have it but don't suffer from it are not really a factor and people that don't get it at all are kind of immune to it are not a factor either so the only people that are a factor are people that get it and get sick from it so we need to determine what makes there are two things we need to de determine a who get, who gets it and gets affected we need to figure out who that is so that we can protect them specifically. And the second thing we need to do is figure out why those that do have it and are not affected are not affected. Like you want to talk about vaccines and pills and whatever and immune systems. You're Like everybody, and theoretically, everybody's wrong about that. What we need to do is figure out what in those people that are sick make them immune to the COVID-19 virus. That's what we need to find out. While we do that, we need to take those who are affected by the virus and whose immune system is not strong enough to, to, to deal with the COVID-19 situation and protect them, quarantine them. And then the economic could, could, economics could work, right? So we're, we're concentrating on the virus instead of concentrating on what makes it viral and what doesn't. It's really a simple mathematical equation. And my problem with that is that right now, again, we're just doing the same thing over and over again. So governments should not be making the same mistakes twice. I do believe, and it's in a personal opinion, I do believe they did the right thing the first time because they were in an unknown situation with the virus they didn't know. They didn't know what they were getting into. They didn't have the proper information. So they did whatever they could and they tried to protect the population. But again, six months later, What's going on, right? Six months later, we're at round two. And if you look at the data, we were talking about 15% uh, infection and, and illness rate. Uh, and now we're down to 2.9%, but we're, we're calling it red. So from 2% to 15% conversion between the infected and the sick, uh, we're not in the same situation. And we're treating it as if we were and okay, that's fine. We need to tamper and make sure it doesn't go higher, but we're still at a very, very low number, like extremely low, low, low number. We're talking about like 800 cases on 60, uh, like I don't even remember how many tested, but a huge number of tested versus uh, a sm like a large number on a small amount of people being tested. So I don't know. Comment all you want, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna read those comments and I will answer you, and uh, go right ahead. And if you want to join in with your camera, let me know. We'll see what we can do. But right now, that's the question I have for our governments. I really wish I had a Ruda or anyone out there. I don't want to have a, a a scientific that agrees or disagrees with COVID nineteen or with the mask. I don't care. All right. That is unimportant to me. What is important to me is how we deal with with extreme situations like this one and how we're supposed to adapt and strategize accordingly on a period of time. We should not be six months later, seven months later, y using the exact same techniques when we know they didn't work the first time or ba barely worked the first time. And when we know that at the beginning, we didn't know anything about the virus to begin with. So that was legitimate, right? I mean, you take extreme precautions when you're heading into the unknown. Now, we're not heading into the unknown. We have data. We know where we're going. The numbers are lower, but we're using the exact same tactic, knowing that people are in depression, jobs are being lost, businesses are going bankrupt. Now, listen, th this podcast is mainly about marketing and business, and there is no way... On a long-term format, this is good. There's no way around it. Uh, this is what's happening, right? So right now, governments are trying to, their best to help individuals and, and businesses here in Quebec and Canada get through the, the, the pandemic. But they're forcing certain businesses to close. And we're going to get into that, by the way, because that's one of the subjects we're treating today. 
So we're we're gonna talk about that because to me it makes no sense. Where do we go from there and what's going on with that pandemic? And how do we deal with it? So these businesses are closing temporarily, but they just barely opened. Like in August, restaurants and bars and everybody else decided to open. And many bars, including my friends' bars, uh, decided not to open at all because they figured, listen, we're allowed to have half the customers and we need to take their names down and their address down so that if there's a problem... Um, there, and if there's a problem, um, I have to call every one of my customers on that night and the previous nights to tell them that one of my customers had COVID-19. Do you realize how ridiculous that is? So they just said, well, you know what? I'm not, I'm not opening. I mean, it'll be more expensive for me to integrate this kind of measures than actually open. Then we have hotels and bars and restaurants that do open because they have no choice. And then you have someone with a mask and a visor. Okay, they, they accepted glasses, which I think it would be the smartest thing. I think everybody should be wearing the glasses and the mask, not the visor and the mask, because that makes no sense either. So we know that the mask is for fluids, mainly for fluids. It's not it's not for for um, the, the gas aspect of this virus, because this virus is airborne, and that mask does not protect you from airborne viruses. None of them, not even the, 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 the N95, just so you know. Look at the description, N95 does not protect you from coronavirus, any of the coronaviruses. So COVID-19 is not an exception. But it's logical to say that at a certain distance, if I have, if I salivate or if I have fluids in my mouth or I've just eaten, there's a chance that I contaminate you and that chance is higher because those fluids will go on you and up to a one meter mer version. So what they're saying is wear a mask just to protect yourself. But the staff have to do the mask and the visor, the visor which makes no sense. I get that they have to wear something, but like 12, 15 hours, it just makes no sense. They can't breathe with both those things. They, they can't work in that environment. Now, not only are we doing that to them now, but now we're telling them close. If, if you're, if you're in a red zone, then you close no, no options. Like that's it. You close. How do businesses deal with that? Now, Quebec government came along and said, okay, we're going to give 15000 a month per business, which I don't know where they're going to get that money because the Quebec government is the highest spending government, like provincial government, state government ever. I mean, that's all we do is spend money because we're huge bureaucrats. And so, hey, BBJ wound. Hey, Jean-Pierre Vaillancourt. Hey, thanks for the comment. Let's see what Jean-Pierre has to say. So he says, not only I do not agree with the latest measures, but I am really offended that they are closing restaurants while their shopping centers stay open for business. It's the incoherence, the incoherence that is driving me crazy. So GP, I completely agree with you, my brother. It makes no sense uh, that, that they decide to do that. Certain businesses are open. Others are not. Uh, <laughs> I, I like someone said, who was it? I think it was, um, Vincenzo Guzzo, who, who shared something on LinkedIn saying that, and it wasn't his, he, he just shared someone else's thing that, that was saying that um, Francois Legault, our prime minister, uh, pro his ex-wife was probably owned a few restaurants and a few bars, and that was he was kind of getting ve vengeful because of that. I don't know. You know, he is a good businessman. Nobody can take that away from him. But a province is not a business. Same way Trump is a good businessman. Well, he's not a good businessman, but he's a... He's a sharky businessman, and that's not the way you run a country. So, yeah, we're kind of stuck between a lot of businessmen that, that try to run countries like they were businesses. Cheers, by the way. Ah, thank you. Good beer. So, what do we, where do we go from there? How fair is this? And why do governments do not adapt their strategy? So th I'm going to end this on... If anybody out there knows Aruda and Francois Lego and think they can have them on my podcast, I will not bash them. I will not be disrespectful. I want to debate with them their strategy in a non-media format, right? So I'm not going to act like a reporter. I'm not going to ask the wrong questions the right way. I'm going to write, I'm going to ask the questions as a citizen, right? And um, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> uh, BBG's wound, man. Uh, I don't. I just shared a George Floyd neck knelt on police officer PNG, uh, brother. Uh, you, everybody knows I'm all about Black Lives Matters, and um, but it's not in the subject today. It was last time though. I do have that somewhere, and I have a nice T-shirt by the way for Black Lives Matter. And um, but right now. At this very, very moment, we're discussing another problem. But that's a problem, of course. But we're, we're talking about another problem, which is the COVID-19 problem and how we are managing it. So we're lucky because we do have a government that is trying to manage it, unlike some countries. Um, but again, they're not adapting their strategies. It's really hard for me to deal with that. I'm really having a hard time. Like, I, I've been... I've been pushing and agreeing with a lot of the measures and telling people, you know, just trust the process. It's just a protective process. But we've gone far beyond what's logical. And I really fear that we are being mismanaged in this aspect. Whether you believe in the COVID-19 virus or not, whether you believe in whether whether a mask is is, you know, is necessary or not by the way nobody ever said it was necessary everybody always said it was an added measure but it doesn't matter whether you agree or not the fact is that let's give like all the benefit of the doubt to the governments that all this is real and all this is true even in that situation where they're right about everything and the COVID-19 is a ruthless virus and everything is bad let's just let's just all agree or pretend to all agree they are still not managing this properly. They are still putting measures that are, in, in French, we say uh, draconian. So in English, it would be well, extreme, I guess. Um, you know, it, it just makes no sense. Extreme, and, and as, as GP Vaillancourt said, not only is it extreme, but it, it's illogical and disrespectful to business people. Coming for a businessman, Francois Legault, who, for those who don't know, is a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Uh, our prime minister is a true businessman who, who ran a an airline, among other things, and invest and reinvest in big businesses. Um, so he's good with numbers, but he's the old school type. Of, he, he's a boss, not a leader, if you'd understand what I mean by that. So he's very uh, patriarchal in his approach. Is it a good approach or a bad approach? I think it depends on the situation. But right now, again... Government is not adapting. Aruda is a scientist. <laughs> Dorizzi, you want to know if it's Trump or Biden 2020? I'm so sorry. Either one, you're you're really stuck. I, I, wow. I'm going to get into that, okay? I hope Stick around. Stick around, Dorizzi. Please stick around because I'm going to get into that. But my quick answer to your question is, Americans are in deep shit either way. You're not going to enjoy either. You're not going to enjoy either one of those as a as a, a president. The yeah, you're pretty much stuck now. I mean, sorry. So, Dorizzi, please stay on because I'm going to talk about that. I promise. Okay. So I'm going to finish with the COVID nineteen situation, and then I'm going to hit into the Biden and uh, Trump situation. And I'm also going to talk about all the YouTube freakazoids that are Republican or left or right and people that I respected that are start, starting to say really stupid shit just so that their candidate wins. You know, at some point, you've got to admit that your candidate is shitty. You can say the other one is shitty, but sometimes, like in this case, both of them are really shitty. Really. I mean, holy crap. Anyway. So COVID-19 situation in Quebec, probably coming to you guys. Uh, we are extremely restrictive because our numbers are going up high and quickly. But high and quickly right now is 2% versus the 15, 20% in, in uh, June. So, and we're acting the same way. So, yeah. All right. So I spoke about that. Uh, I'm done talking about that. We're going to talk about uh, how they're forcing. You know what? Dorizzi, I'm going to get back to the COVID-19 situation, and I'm going to hit right now, and we're going to talk about Biden and Trump, all right? That's what you want. That's what you get. 
So Biden or Trump, who will win? First of all, who won the debate? No one. No one won the debate. Neither one were professional. Neither one were diplomatic. Neither one were leaders. And uh, I don't remember. Can anybody remind me who was the, the, the host? I keep forgetting his name. That's how much of an impact he had on me. Come on, uh, Dorizi, who was the host on the, the debate? Okay, let me check that. Um, what was his name? Uh, whatever. Anyway, the host of the, the first debate was one of the worst hosts to ever. I mean, this guy does not know how to control his people. First of all, you should have a switch to close his mic. Trump did not deserve to speak. He was extremely disrespectful. At the very, very, very least, you respect your opponent. You let him speak, and then you counter. If he says something stupid, you can cut him off once or twice, but that was so disrespectful. And, okay, to all you Republicans out there, Trump lies. Do not defend him. Trump lies. I'm not defending Biden while I'm saying this. I'm telling you that either an extreme left win at all costs or an extreme right win at all costs, neither of those options are good. And no matter who you are on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, trying to promote the fact that Biden is worse than Trump or that Trump is worse than Biden, at the very least, Biden is respectful until he said, will you shut up, man? And even that, I mean, Chris Wallace, thanks, GP. Chris Wallace did, and my God, you need to command respect. I would have gotten up, if I would have if I would have been at the head of that debate, I would have gotten up and closed Trump's mic right in his face. He does not deserve the respect because he you only deserve the respect you give to others, and he's not giving anyone any respect. Don't tell me he's because he's a businessman and he's ruthless, and that's the way we run things. No, you run things with a lot of respect with people, and you try to make sense of our situation. And you convince people with facts and you convince people with heart and you convince people with faith and you convince people with a, a bright future and a plan to get to that bright future. Neither of those guys did that. Well, okay, Biden at some point did with, I don't remember what the subject was, but he did prove something. It was somewhat okay, but I mean, come on. It's a bit like our prime minister, right, Trudeau? who pretty much, I mean, he's a, he's a good diplomat, but he doesn't have the, the, the cojones to fight against a guy like Trump. Well, so Biden has the same, same principle. Biden doesn't have the strength. And the, the hoops, 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 or whatever you call it there, he doesn't have what it takes to do the job. I mean, he, he may be very good president. That doesn't mean he's not a good president. Because running a country... And being a good debater are two different things. I mean, and so Republicans are saying, you know what? Trump had great policies. Listen, every president ever has had a few good policies. But he's not a good, doing a good job. When, when your leader is disrespected and laughed at by the entire rest of the world, and by the way, the rest of the world is a lot more of a population than it is in the U.S., and you're not the greatest country anymore, Sadly, you could be the greatest country again, but it won't be Trump that brings you back there. You cannot be the greatest country in the world if you're disrespected by the entire world. I'm sorry, you, you don't. You can't force respect onto people. Respect is deserved. Respect is commanded. Oh, God, I have a hard time with this. So who will win the debate? So uh, who will win the election? So I think Trump wins. Now, everybody's saying... Um, Biden's going to win. I, I don't think Biden's winning. Why? Because Biden does not provoke the kind of emotion Trump provokes. So the more Biden uh, grows in the polls, the more the media says Biden will win, the more the media is behind Biden, the more Trump will win. Because people, people right now, believe that governments uh, are not doing their job. And because of that, because of that, 
um, they don't trust the governments. And what Trump is doing is kind of, you know, poking the bear, right? He keeps poking the bear, and people get keep getting madder and madder and madder. And who are they mad at? They're going to be mad at Biden because Biden represents Biden or the Republican, uh, the Democrats, right? Because they represent they represent an institution, the government institution, whereas Trump represents the bully the anti-institution. Fairly, if Trump did a good job, it could work. But bullying people in the inter international markets will never work long term. It won't. I mean, the, the reason we got to NAFTA is because we needed to have an understanding and a respect between countries. And we've had like the 90s and part of the uh, 2000 uh, with a lot, where countries were very respectful from each other. So much so that, let me remind everybody about this, China was a closed country, a closed economic country, right? And they opened up and they started uh, being more, not Democrat, but being more um, open and having a, a, a very, sorry, policies that are not quite as strict. And other countries started doing that. And if you look at Russia and, and so many other countries who are pretty much, well, not anymore, but who were going with the econo economic uh, flow. So whether you're against glob globalization or whether you're against uh, global economies or you're not, the fact is when a planet gets along, things work well, and when people are bullying each other pushing them pushing each other around well shit hits the pan and then we're stuck like we are now i mean that's the way it is so biden or trump is that what you asked me dorizi well it's really simple trump is going to win not because he's the best candidate but because he pokes the bear and the bear gets up and the bear goes to vote and Democrats represent a more docile part of the world. And uh, they will not get up and, and vote. They'll scream and say, blue, blue, blah, blah, blue, 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 and I believe it, and blah, 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 blue, 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 and I believe it. But at the end of the day, they may not vote. If minorities could vote a little higher, uh, I think that would be good. If, um, yeah, I think minorities and women need to get to the poll. Uh, just to boost those numbers. I think everybody should vote. I don't care who you vote for. You should vote. And again, sadly for all of you, uh, Trump and Biden are two very, very bad choices. And I do not understand why the Democrats chose Trump, uh, chose uh, Biden. I don't know. I don't understand. I, I really don't understand. I mean, I would have put Michelle Obama there. She would have wiped the floor with Trump. And by the way, during that debate, if I would have been Biden, I just would have, I just would have stared at Trump and not say a word. I just will let him talk, and that's it. And at the end of the debate, I would have said, "Well, now that you made a buffoon out of yourself, I'm probably just going to answer the questions." Because at some point, you need to just stop. It's not supposed to be a a a war of stupid uh, a war of stupidity it's supposed to be a debate where people answer a question and where they argue actual facts and we had a stuttering man and we had a liar does he lie about everything no he doesn't lie about everything do uh, does has he done only a bad job no he hasn't done only a bad jump a job but he's not a great president he's disrespected he thinks more about his wallet than he does about his country. And uh, he's firm in his beliefs, whether they're right or wrong. And his um, atta press, attache press there, the, the, the nice lady there, that's, she's cute, but she's ruthless. She does a great job shutting down people, but she doesn't answer the questions. And she's not, she's excusing the president a lot instead of actually answering the question and they're never really answering any questions so yeah and i can't say anything about the canadian government about that because they're not they're not much better what i would like to talk to you about is the marketing aspect of all this so who has the best strategy right now 
when it comes to politics. Again, it's Trump. Now, I don't really care whether Trump or Biden wins. Well, I'd really rather on a global level that Trump doesn't win because he is a danger to the world. Uh, but um, on a more a strategic level, Trump has a better uh, control, has better control over his marketing strategies. His brand is more powerful, and so on a business standpoint, uh, Biden is very weak. So right now, Biden is uh, Biden's budget is almost twice as much advertising budget is almost twice as high as Trump's, which is rare because last time Trump's was higher. Last election, Trump's was like he spent a lot of money. And right now, Biden's spending double what Trump is spending. So Biden's like pushing, pushing, pushing against Trump all over the media, all over the place and putting in the money. That's because he's backed, obviously, because a lot of people want Trump out. Uh, and you know some of those people, and I'm not going to get into the politics of that. So that being said, Trump will still win because his strategy long-term is better. So here's the thing about Trump. Everybody knows who Trump is. Everybody knows Trump's history. Everybody knows what Trump wants and how Trump thinks. You don't have that with Biden. You have someone who's very vague, not very convincing. You're not sure whether he's right. You know he did a good job as a vice president because he did, but that's all you know. And if I ask almost any American what did Biden do, Though it was very good, nobody really knows, right? So there's no, like, politicians, you know, they do a lot of things, but most people don't know what they do. But businessmen, when they, billionaires, people know what they did. So everybody knows Trump's history. Everybody knows that Trump is ruthless. Everybody knows Trump talks like a, a second grader. Do you want to know why Trump is loved by most of America? It's because he speaks to the Americans the way he does. It is a strategy that works for him. He is understood. It doesn't need to be the truth. It just needs to be his truth. I've spoken to pro-Trump supporters who told me, yes, we know he lies. We know. He's just emotional and says stuff. And then, you know, when we back check, we realize that it's not exactly true, but we understand what he really means by that. Um, whether I agree with that really doesn't matter. But marketing-wise, it's working. He's got a good brand. He's got a good long-term strategy. He is extremely good at converting people and making people feel unsafe. Right now, people are, are, are living in chaos. And though he promotes that chaos... He gives the impression that he's strong enough to carry it. And so with that impression, if you put a guy as weak as Biden uh, up against him, whether Biden is, is better or not for the job, I'm not saying that he is or he isn't. He could be better for the job. I mean, most people would be better at that job. An ideal, you know, I think the presidency should be two people. Um you need a composed person and you need someone that's willing to take a little risk. Um, but yeah, so Biden, the choice of putting Biden there was really bad. Biden doesn't have a good brand. He is, sadly enough, um, he has a hard time communicating. He, he you know, like us, he, he seems ill-prepared. Um, he's not, you know, like if I look at him, I like him, okay, but I can understand that a lot of people are thinking, okay, if he's like that now, what is he going to be like in four years? And do we want, do we really elect someone only for four years? No, the ideal, we, we elect him for eight years. And most people are thinking Biden in eight years is going to be like, wow, you won't know which word to put after the next. Uh, is that true or not? I don't know. But let's just say this. I would not have put Biden against Trump. I would have put Michelle Obama. Yeah. Anybody but Hillary Clinton would have done a better job. Uh, that's the way I see it. So good luck, my dear American friends. You are fucked. Yeah. Uh, I usually don't use bad words, but you're fucked. Royally, 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 royally fucked. I hope you get Biden for only one simple reason. 
he will have, he will listen a lot more than Trump does. He will look and analyze what what people's wants are. The advantage of a left and center left government is that they care more about the people than the money. The disadvantage, well, is not. The disadvantage is the bureaucracy, right? It, it, they usually will build a very heavy, loaded bureaucracy. But, you know, neither sides are perfect, that's for sure. I mean, you do not have a true liberal government. So we used to here in Canada. We don't anymore. We're also separating to extremes left, right, instead of staying center as a people. Oh, boy. Yeah, sorry I went there. So... Let's get back to the COVID Quebec situation, please. And let's talk about cinemas because uh, I've been trying to get uh, Vincenzo Guzzo on my podcast for a while. Now, he's already agreed to be on my podcast, but I keep reminding him that he's agreed. (laughs) And I can't wait to have him. And I'd love to talk about this with him. So, Vince, you're probably not listening, but if ever you are listening, please, 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 let's talk about this. Let's talk about everything you've done so far. So listen to this. Listen to that. I'm going to read something to you guys, all right? Uh, let me put it on screen, actually. Is this the one? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, doop, 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 share screen. Not that one. Not that one. <laughs> that's so funny. So, yeah, that one. Thank you. All right. You guys are ready? Okay. So here we go. This is uh, Quebec's updated list of red zone business closures. Listen to this. So if you're in a red zone like Montreal, restaurants and food courts and shopping centers and food stores, except for deliveries, takeouts, and drive throughs orders, that's got to close. Bars and discotheques. By the way, discotheques don't exist anymore, so it's all bars. Nobody dances anymore. It's too bad, too. Microbreweries and distilleries that serve food on site. Casinos, museums, biodomes, planetarium, insectariums, botanical gardens, aquarium, and zoos, all closed. Arcades. Okay, arcades I get. I mean, everybody's touching those machines. I mean, arcades make sense. I would have closed arcades too. Amusement centers, parks, uh, and water parks. So water parks should never have been reopened. That's like they're already cesspools. So, yeah. Sorry about, you know, sorry to all the water park owners. I like you guys, but I mean, one person is sick there, everybody's sick. Saunas and spas, except for personal care services provided for those locations. Okay. Libraries outside of educational institutions. Makes no sense to me. Movie theaters and rooms in which performing arts are presented, including venues where the arts are uh, broadcast. Wow. And youth hostels. Obviously, youth hostels, we understand why. I mean, one of the biggest problems is that the 20-somethings did not respect at all what was going on and gathered and partied and did whatever they wanted and didn't give a shit. Um, yeah. So that part I understand. So there are certain things, like very little ones, but some of them, like water parks, I agree with. Arcades, I, I agree with. Amusement parks, I would normally not agree with, but here's my thing with amusement, amusement parks, right? Um, the lineups. Like, no, uh, you know, I went to one and nobody respects the two meters in the lineup because nobody wants to wait in the lineup. So they, they all end up like going on the other. They should have little shopping carts for, the, for, for, for uh, those parks also. What else do I agree with? That's it. In the long list of things I just told you, this is the only thing I agree with. Wow. Can you imagine? So in, I think in June, I had a conversation with Vincenzo Guzzo, uh, really nice guy, by the way. And he was saying that he was, I think it was June or was it March or April? So it was May. No, it was in May. I think it was in May. So he was getting his theaters ready to make sure that they are extremely safe. And he's invested time and energy and a lot of money. And then there's uh, the Federation of Museums who 
completely transform the way they work to comply, but also went above and beyond, um, above and beyond regulations to make those environments safe. And that's where I is mad. Bars, same thing. They were already confined to such a small type of, of, of uh, groups. And they were already restricted to such a level that m half of them decided not to open. And then you close them down even more. I mean, I really have a hard time understanding why they're doing that. Saunas and spas, same thing. They should not be closed. Uh, there's a very simple reason for that. They just need to restrict the amount of people that are there. So if business owners are respectful, or if they disrespect the rules, then you close them down. But if they don't, you keep them open. So when I was talking to Vincenzo, he was telling me, listen, and hopefully when he gets on this podcast, we'll get to talk about it a lot more. But he said, listen, we're really, we're really working hard to make this a safe environment. And we're going to do whatever it takes. We're even willing to do only two seaters, right? So for every two, like he would have removed two seats at every two seat if he had to because he wants to keep giving that service. He thinks that theaters are a necessity because people need to get out of the house. They have good ventilation systems. They, they, they upgraded ventilation systems. They close the restaurants inside and make sure that if you do need food, uh, you get packaged food. So everything is there. Everything's working out. And after all that investment, he's getting closed down again. I mean, out. How is that logic, right? And how much money is he losing? So again, I I think I have a solution for that. Well, it's not a solution to reopen, but it is a solution to to make sure that he understand that that governments react differently. First of all, from the beginning of my podcast, I said what governments should do. They should re-strategize, and I even said how they should do it to make this work. So we should need to propagate that information. Like everybody's listening to the boss cat, this podcast, you know, take my information and, you know, shove it in front of people's faces saying, listen, this is how we're going to fix the problem. Right. I mean, don't isolate everybody. Find out who is immune. Find out why they're immune. Find out who is not immune and quarantine them. That's it. That's it. That is the single best strategy. Better than vaccines, better than anything you want. Find, find who is immune and who is not. Those who are immune, find out why. Those who are not immune and, 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 and in danger, quarantine them. How much simpler can you make this? Seriously. How much simpler can you make this? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, zoos. Explain to me, zoos. Why are they closing zoos? Again, you know, the, if you go to the IGA or if you go to the um, Walmart, they'll give you a cart, and that cart is about a meter and a half to almost two, two meters long. Do that in your zoos. You know, create a little gizmo that, that separates people so that they don't hit each other, and, and that's it. I mean... Businesses should not be penalized about this. They've done the efforts. They have the people at the door. They have the, 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 the not the antibiotics, but the little thingy there, the alcohol thing you sort of, your hands are clean. Their staff is suffering, like sweating like pigs and behind that mask and that visor. They're doing everything that they're supposed to do and you're shutting them down. Stop. You know, businesses have to stop suffering for people's stupidities. Yeah, you know what? If someone's sick, you ask him where he's been and give him a ticket. That's it. I don't know. I mean, maybe it's unfair also the way I just said that. Or I just threw that out, but I don't know. I, I feel like there's something missing here. I, I feel like it's not working. So to me, cinemas, museums have done a lot of work Restaurants have done a lot of work to comply, and they should not be closed. There is no logical reason for them to be closed. Most of them have, um, like in restaurants, they have fiberglass walls in between each table on top of having staff that's hyper-protected. We all know that's not where the virus is spreading. We all know it's spreading 
through uh, condo parties and people renting out whole floors and pretending they're all the separate tourists and making parties in those hotels uh, at the park and uh, not 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 the 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 the, the Laurent or the Six Flags. No, no, no. At the park, like on the mountain, at the park, making parties with booze and that's it. I mean, and some at the office who don't give a shit, but nobody's catching this in restaurants. Nobody's catching this in cinemas. And the percentage of people going to the cinema right now is so small that they cannot be the ones propagating and, and, and infecting everybody, the population. So they're just losing money right now. They're shutting us down. And let me tell you something. I'm going to go further than that. Me, as a, as a marketing strategist, consultant, they have put me in trouble. Now, fine, I can survive three months, but it's been six months. Who who uh, who am I going to go? Like I need, I usually go with the way I run my business is really simple. I have a full time customer, right? So someone at forty hours a week, thirty five forty hours a week, and then I have smaller clients which I keep active and help and consult with. So I roughly work, I don't know, sixty seventy hours. Then I have my podcast, and then I have my the Kings and Bros brand that I'm I'm developing. So with all that, I work hundred hundred hours a week. But for the past six months, for the past six months, I've been losing business, losing money, losing money, losing money, losing money. Because, like, who's going to hire me full time, right? Who's going to bring in a consultant full time where they don't even know they're going to be open next month or not? Some might, some might not. But it's very hard to go knock on doors and ask for business and tell them, you know, I can help you out. I can. I can even help you out of the COVID-19 situation. But the owner of that business is in a protective mode and self-conscious and, and and anxious and scared of what's to come. Most people don't even know the end of this. I mean, how many times, how many years is going to last? Are we finding anything? And the vaccine we know is not a solution. The vaccine is not a, 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 a short-term solution. So it doesn't work. It, the marketing behind that doesn't work. So here's the thing. If and when uh, Vince and other my, 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 my future guests on Everybody's Always Right podcast, come on. As a matter of fact, we should, we should do a round table about this. Maybe I should tell Vince and a few of my other friends in the business, you know what, let's do a live round table and talk about how we can change policies and how we can use marketing and branding to switch everything around and educate governments because often governments try to educate population but who is educating the government right nobody i mean don't get me wrong uh aruda anybody says he's not a scientist you're wrong got this guy's got certificates and in, in infectology and he's uh you know the guy's got a good background he, he he's a doctor with a doctorate he knows what he's talking about but as a politician he's not in live action and he's not receiving the proper information from pharma and from anybody else and he is stuck answering with the policies his governments are putting forward he cannot go sidetrack even if he disagrees with it so I don't even know if sometimes he agrees with it because, you know, we've seen pictures of him going against his own policies. But, yeah, we should do that. Let's do a roundtable and invite, like, big names. Even Aruda should be there, actually. You know what? I would like to have – let's see, who would I have with that? Who, who would you suggest would be at that roundtable to talk about how we can re-educate our governments? So – I know Vince is a conservative, or for for you Americans, uh, that would be a, a Republican. <laughs> um, hmm. Who else do we have? Oh, yes. Um, well, we could have Trudeau, and we could have Arruda. But Trudeau is too good of a talker. He's not going to tell. He, he's just going to philosophize about things. So he, he would not be a good candidate. So... Um, yeah, who else? I would have I would have said François Lambert, but Frank is too much like 
too much like Vince. Um, they're very different and like they don't share the same opinions, but they're both they're both uh, right-sided businessmen and who are firm in their beliefs. So I'm not sure. I would love to have Brian Mulroney. Oh yeah. At that round table, I would love to anybody take down these names and try to get them on my one of my podcasts. So Brian Mulroney, Vincenzo Guzzo, um who was it? Who's the third one? Shit, I already forgot. Okay, so uh yeah. Uh then Pasola Bell I said no. Who else would it be? Let me think, let me think. We need a strong woman. Who's a strong woman that would just, you know, put her foot down? Uh, hmm. Oh, Caroline. Uh, Caroline, the one that's, uh, that that leads on. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. What's her name again? Oh, wait, let me check. Let's see here. We go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn and find out who. I keep forgetting her last name. And I know her. That's the worst part. I'm so bad with names. It's insane. Um, so she would be good at that round table. No, not Gary Vaynerchuk for sure. I don't want him on that round table. Uh, who else do we have? Hmm. Uh, hold on. I'll find her. I'll find her. Caroline, Caroline, Caroline. You know, she would be, oh, yes. You know, another strong woman. Um, The one that owns the hotel chain, uh, Germain. That's right. She would she would be great for that. So, yeah, there we go. So I would have Vincenzo Guzzo. I would have, um, they're all there, <laughs> Burrell Sol Solomon. <laughs> That'd be funny. Serge Borchmey would be another guy on the round table I'd like to have. Uh, Aruda. Uh, What else? We are talking about Quebecers, obviously, because we're talking about the Quebec government. We we need a good lawyer on our panel. Maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe Patrick Farley. Someone in the business. And, of course, like I said, Karen, hold on. Let me tell you what her name, her last name is. She's an amazing woman. And she promotes uh, women in high uh, places. Let's see. That's right. Karen Ketsi. I love that girl. She That woman. She is amazing. She, I mean, I back her up. So she's a uh, top 100 most powerful woman in Canada. And she promotes women in, oh, I can't believe I have this guy's face on my, hold on a second. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I know it's still shared, GP. Uh, I don't care. Because <laughs> uh, so, so my buddy, uh, GP, is saying that my screen is still shared, my LinkedIn, but I don't care. Uh, that's why I put it there. <laughs> I don't mind if people see what I'm searching. So, oh, there you go. See, so if we look at this video here, you know, we're talking, anyway, I don't want to skip subjects. Um, so a round table of important people that discuss and people that don't agree with each other that will discuss um, what the next steps are and how we can educate our government. So, yeah, I'm done with that subject. I'm sorry. It, it really is it, getting me, you know, As they say, it's getting me started. Um, so we're going to talk. About, <laughs> we're going to skip subjects now, and we're going to go with. Um, oh, I'm so sorry. This every time we talk about politics or the COVID 19 situation, I go and I, I start going further into it, further into it, further into it. And it's not that I want to. It just it just really annoys me that we are where we are today. And um, yeah, it's just, it's it's just sad. So let me unscreen this. There, here we go. Um, there, that didn't work. Yeah, it's just <laughs> yeah, it's just really annoying. So, what else can we talk about today? We're, uh, well, we're, I think I think I went all out on this one. I think I'm tired, and I don't want to talk about a lot of things anymore. But let's go with it. Let's talk about marketing and let's talk about uh, what's going to go happen with Christmas. So we're pretty sure, I can't believe I'm still in that subject. So we're pretty sure businesses are not going to be open and we're pretty sure that there will be no Halloween. Yeah. No Halloween. What do we do with that, people? 
What do we do with that? What do we do with that on Halloween? Well, what do, what are we going to do if we can't go shopping for Christmas? So I saw an article somewhere that was saying, well, it'll be a less. Do I still have that article somewhere? It'll be a less uh, commercial, a less commercial Christmas. Do I believe that? Uh, I think Amazon's going to make a shitload of money. I don't think uh, businesses are going to make money. I think Amazon's going to make money off everybody else's back. So if you guys want to buy some shares, Amazon shares, you know, buy them now before Christmas arrives because those shares are going to go up very, 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 very fast. Um, yeah, that's one thing I'm sure of. Then what else? What else is going to happen here? Um, what are we going to do with these businesses? What's going to happen with our Christmas? Come on, anybody. What's going to happen with our Christmas? Are we going to have a Christmas? Shopping malls, are they going to be closed? Are we going to be in the middle of a pandemic? What about ski hills? Are we going to close down ski hills also? Oh, man, I hope we're not going to close down ski hills. Between you and I, that would be really, really bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? All right. Let's talk about something else then, right? Let's go into a very simple project, and we're going to talk about, and we're going to change completely, by the way. We're going to go into whether you need to promote your business brand or whether you need to promote your um whether you need to promote your um, your personal brand. So it's very fashionable right now to uh, say that, you know, your personal brand is as much or more important than, than, um, than your business brand. And, well, do I believe that? No, I don't. See, uh, branding is a very important part of marketing, but it's not the only part of marketing. So here's the thing. There are two ways to promote your business. And there are two philosophies behind that. The first way is, as we said, you promote, you create your own brand. And then with that brand, uh, you start pushing businesses. So a little bit like influencers, right? So influencers, that's exactly what they're doing. They are um, they are building their personal brand, and then they use their brand to promote other people's business, uh, products or their own. Like in my case, with the podcast, I'm trying to promote my own products. And no, I'm drinking beer, but this is not my beer. So that's one way of doing marketing. And then people are, are, are taking that, and making it to a business. So let's say, for instance, um, let's say we were talking about, oh, there we go, um, <laughs> Tony Robbins. So Tony Robbins is a brand. So why is Tony Robbins a brand, and why is he concentrating on his personal brand more than anything else? So here's the thing. I understand that building a personal brand is important, and I agree with it. There are some certain cases that they are. But it's never, ever, ever a personal brand. You are actually building a business brand, which, which is using your name. So Tony Robbins is not a person. It is a product and a service who's using the name of its founder to promote its business. He is not building his personal brand. He is using his name as a brand for a service and a product. Some people start with their brand. Who? Gary Vaynerchuk is an exact, excellent uh, example of that. He's the king of content marketing, and so is Cardone. So Cardone is an ex excellent example of that. He completely created his brand off the internet, and um, now he's trickling down to services, right? So a lot of people show off, or uh, what was the, the other guy's name there? Uh, the, the the one that got busted for faking and renting his big mansion there. Uh, uh, um, 
Bazillion, Bazillion or something. Yeah, Bazillion. Um, <laughs> Dan Bazillion, whatever. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Another great example. So these guys build their personal brand and then promote product, right? It could be their product or product that holds their names. So yes, that is a, a very good way of promoting business. So here's my the way I see it. Business is business. A business is an entity. So, uh, for instance, uh, Tony Robbins' product and services is an entity. The person, Tony Robbins, whether he is in the picture any, or not anymore, that business will still run. He doesn't need to be there. As long as the products and the courses are there, it's going to work. So the brand or the business, because a business and a brand are two different things, and people need to understand that. A brand is a marketing tool. That's all it is, right? A brand is a way for someone to identify you. When you build a brand, you are building a way for people to identify either you or your business or your product. You're not building yourself up. And if it's well built, then it won't need you as an individual anymore. So do you build a brand for your product or your business or yourself? Well, A, if, you're, if you don't have any products and you want to trickle down, you start with branding yourself. But in the end, what you did is build a brand for your product. Even if you're the product, if you did a good job, the individual will not need to be there anymore to sell the product. That's the way it is. So we're going to close on that today. It's a short uh, show, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. And I'm going to see you next week with a new guest next week. And don't forget, as of next week, I'm going to have a um, probably half an hour episode, maybe more. We'll see, whatever. I don't like to count time. See, usually I go to five, two hours. Now I'm going one hour. It doesn't matter. Time is irrelevant when you podcast so maybe two to three times a week i'm going to do small uh, small uh podcasts and then thursdays we keep our big podcast uh and interviews and or you know we just chit chat the way we just did and i hope to see you there by the way so for those who don't know me my name is styles uh which is my nickname actually and my real name is Gislain Roy, but my american friends have a hard time pronouncing my name so we'll go with styles. I have a, a clothing brand which helps support this podcast called Kings and Bros. So or K and B. So go to kingsandbros.com, buy a mug, buy a t-shirt, buy a hoodie. There's not much there yet, but we're building the brand, so don't worry. It'll all be there later. And um, yeah, that's what I do. And I'm a marketing consultant. And right now I'm <laughs> I'm hoping COVID leaves because I'm going to need some cash, man. I'm going to need some business. This is uh, this is getting really heavy. Yeah, and I love my job. I love consulting, and I love branding, and I love helping people grow their businesses. But everybody's scared shitless. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. That's where we're going to leave on. So next week, we're going to make a three, four, uh, no, not the three, four, sorry, two, three smaller podcasts and one big podcast. And I hope you're going to be there. And I hope you're going to be uh, always happy to hear me. And uh, and we're going to grow together. After all, this is only the fifth episode. And we will be growing. So thank you, everybody, for listening. And I wish you a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye now. And see you soon. Oh, yeah. I forgot my slogan. Don't fake it. Just make it.